Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and I'm gonna show you today how I dry age this Wagyu New York Strip super high quality, and how I reverse sear it on my smoker behind me. Back when I started this video, I thought it was gonna be 45 days, but that has changed. And now it's 60 days, and I'm quite well pleased with it. All right, so we've got an 18 pound New York strip right here. It's Wagyu, and I believe it's Australian Wagyu. It says AA5 right here. Uh, I don't think it's the same as Japanese A5 Wagyu, or else I probably would have paid five times as much for this. But it is a nice piece of meat. It should be well marbled, and hopefully it's gonna be really tasty. So I eat a lot of steak day to day. Um, mostly I eat it for the protein. I'm eating like steak and rice, or steak and a sweet potato, or something like that. But for this purpose, I want to try to create the best tasting steak I possibly can for the sheer enjoyment of the steak. And for that reason, I'm going to be dry aging a large portion of this New York strip. What I want to do is see how dry aging affects the flavor, and I want to be able to try that without paying a super premium price at a restaurant. So I'm going to try it at home. It could be a complete failure, but I'm willing to find out. So to that end, I'm going to be cutting off a few steaks here uh, just to eat, just like normal. And then I'll be taking about 12 pounds of this New York strip and putting that in my fridge and I'll be trying to dry age it at home and we're gonna see what the results are like. Okay, so I'm gonna take off about eight steaks here to eat fresh and the rest is gonna be dry aged. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one steak, freeze it, and I'll be able to compare the fresh steak to the dry aged steak at the end of the process just to see what kind of improvements, if there are improvements, uh, in the flavor come out from the dry aging process. Right now, the reason I'm wearing gloves while I'm doing this is because I don't want to introduce any bacteria from my hands to this meat because it's gonna be dry aging. So while it's dry aging, uh, bacteria, microorganisms from the environment actually will accumulate on the surface and form sometimes mold and various stuff that grows on the outside. I don't want any off flavors to get into the meat, so I'll just let the natural air be the source of the microorganisms rather than my hand. All right, we've got our steaks cut out now. As you can see, I cut some nice big steaks. Um, this one's about 20 ounces, and so these are going to be really good. And this is what we have left of that New York strip here. So we got about 10 pounds left, and so we're going to dry age this portion. And we're going to be able to compare it to the fresh beef that we're going to stick in the freezer. So after it's dry aged, we're going to have a good comparison test there. But for the dry aging process, um, like I mentioned earlier about wearing gloves, what's actually happening is the microorganisms. Um, around the steak actually start to grow on the exterior of the steak. And what happens on the inside is that the fats start to break down and you start to develop new flavors as the enzymes in the meat actually start to um, tenderize the meat. So enzymes are proteins that perform functions, essentially. So these enzymes are going through and performing those functions on the cellular level and so it's breaking down that tissue and it becomes more tender. And then also, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but uh, from what I've read online, it's the bacteria and the enzymes that create the new flavors that you get with dry aged beef. And so I don't want to add anything else in, which is why I'm having the gloves. And what you want to do with dry aging, rather than you know putting meat somewhere and it rotting, what happens is the exterior of the meat dries out and essentially protects the interior from spoilage. So we got to keep it as dry as possible. So I'm going to pat this down with a towel and dry it off and then I'm going to put it on this rack. So it's essentially like a cookie um, cooling rack on top of a pan and then in that pan I'm going to fill it with Himalayan pink salt and that's just to try to absorb as much moisture as possible. So the salt should act as something that's called, um, the term is hygroscopic. So it's going to absorb moisture. And so what we should see is a dry crust form on the outside of this and um, hopefully some really tasty flavors developing on the inside. So I'm going to take this salt 
fill the bottom of this pan with that salt. Uh, probably use a couple pounds to do that. And then we're going to take this. We're not going to put any salt directly on this, uh, but we're going to take this and put it on that rack and then stick it in the fridge and allow the dry aging process to take place. Now the last step to this dry aging process is we're putting this meat in the fridge. And so we have an extra fridge here that's got nothing in it because I don't want any off flavors to influence the flavor of that meat. And uh, we have our rack with salt, everything's in there. But the last thing we want to do is circulate air. So I have this wireless fan here and it's going to be circulating air. Um, and the reason I have a wireless fan is because the wire kind of prevents the fridge from closing all the way. So the fridge is set at 38 degrees. We're going to have this wireless fan in there circulating the air to dry the exterior of the meat and uh, keep any kind of weird flavors from, from popping up. So I'm going to turn this fan on. Now it's on. I'm going to put it right here. And so it's going to be circulating air around the meat. And hopefully in 45 days, we're going to have some delicious meat. I'll have to change the battery a couple times between now and then. But that's okay. Now the first thing I want to do is figure out how much weight we lost in the dry aging process. When I stuck this thing in the fridge to dry age, it weighed 10 pounds. And so it's desiccated, it's hard as a rock right here. So I know it lost some moisture. So to figure out how much, let's put it on the scale and see how much it weighs. Okay, 7.63 pounds. So that tells me we lost about 25% of the weight, which um, is about what I expected. I thought maybe even a little bit more. But what we gotta do now is get these things ready to go on the smoker. I'll probably only cook one today and put the rest in the freezer so I can eat them later on because even as much as I eat, I can't eat that whole thing. So I'm gonna throw it on the cutting board and start cutting them up. Now, when I'm cutting this into steaks, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off these end chunks so I can um, know where the regular meat starts. Then I'm gonna cut it into steaks and then I'll remove the exterior because it seems to be maybe a little easier than trying to do it um, for this whole chunk of meat all at once. So, first things first, let me kind of shave this off. I don't know how much I'm gonna have to shave off, but that is dry, <laughs> okay? Hard as a rock. So at this point, I've taken off a few chunks that look like this and the meat on the inside is kind of brownish colored. And so I was expecting maybe a deep red or something like that. And so I don't know if it's all just gonna be like this or if it's gonna eventually turn into that deep red color that I expected. So what I'm gonna do is cut off like a full steak and see if there's any change. If it's all the same, then I'll just go from there. There we go. Now it's starting to look like that deep red that I was hoping for. All right, so this is starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna keep going with this, um, cut this all into steaks, and then I'll choose the best looking one, and I'll compare that to the steak that we did not dry age that we actually vacuum sealed with froze. This was way more difficult than I thought it would be. The hardened, dry exterior of the meat is actually pretty difficult to cut through, at least with this knife it is. I've chosen this steak as the one that I think looks the best, so what I'm gonna do is trim off the exterior and then get ready to reverse sear it. All right, all trimmed up, ready to go. I'm kind of curious to see how much it weighs. Let's see. Hmm. 0.62 pounds, so a little over half a pound. So what does that mean? Not quite 10 ounces. Okay, so I just took 
our frozen fresh uh, steak out of the uh, vacuum seal. As you can see, it's much bigger and looks a lot different than our dried steak. They're both about the same thickness, but this is much more condensed. This is not condensed at all. So this should cook in about the same amount of time because the thickness is the same, but they're probably gonna taste very different. Now, what I'm gonna do to season these guys is pretty simple. I'm just gonna use salt. So I'm gonna open up the salt here, and I, um, I dry aged with this salt, so I don't imagine it would have any kind of contribution to the flavor, but in case it does, I'm gonna use the same kind of salt for this. So I'm just gonna sprinkle liberally on the top of these guys, both the dry aged and the non dry aged. And let's just do something that looks like that. And I almost always use kosher salt, so this is kind of a, a different experience for me. But flip it over, get this out as well. We're all seasoned up. So we're ready to put these guys on the smoker to reverse sear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a temperature probe in and when it gets to 130 or maybe even 128, I'm gonna pull them off and allow them to cool. After they've cooled, I'm going to sear them. And I, I take them off and let them cool because I don't want them to overcook. So if we get a medium rare or even if we get a medium, I'll be perfectly happy with that. I like both of those. So I'm gonna stick a probe in, throw them both on the smoker and then wait until we reach that 128 magical temperature. So insert probe, place on smoker, done. And then throw this guy on there too. And now we close it up and wait to see what happens. The internal temperature reached 128, so I pulled these steaks off. And now it's time to sear them. So on the firebox side, I got the fire super hot, put the grill grate in, and we're gonna throw them on for maybe 60 seconds on each side. And after that, they should be seared and they should be nice and pink in the center. pretty good pretty hot though you can still hear it sizzle it was really hot we've got some good sear I think there some good sear there now it's kind of hard to tell because these steaks turned red because of the smoke that they were on for the reverse sear but we got a nice sear a nice char on the outside like you can kind of see it there more especially but all over here you can see it started to caramelize and hopefully built a really nice crust on the exterior of the meat now the reason we reverse sear is because we want two things we want a great crust on the exterior which is the searing part and we want the inside to be pink from one end to the other and so to do that we bring it up slowly to temperature inside the smoker and then we get that medium rare to medium that we want. Whatever you prefer, you can do it any way you want. But medium rare to medium, I'm happy with both of those. And then we pull it off, throw it over super hot heat, sear the outside so we get that flavorful crust on the exterior. That's why we reverse sear. And in a minute here, we're gonna cut these open and see if we were successful. First things first, let's cut these things open and see if they're cooked properly. So we'll start right here and just cut across here. Uh, that's good. That's a medium rare in there. In this lighting it might be hard to see. You see that red exterior right there and the rest is pink from here to here. And this is the dry aged steak and I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna cut a piece out of there and try it in a second. Maybe you can see it better on this side um, but that's a good medium rare. Really good. So I'm happy with that. And then let's see about this guy. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle here. And because this one's not dry aged, you can see that this one is perfectly medium rare, one side to the other. Um, it's really good. Okay. So first, I'm gonna try this one that has not been dry aged, just so I get a sense of the baseline for this meat. 
And so, let me cut off a good size chunk right there. You guys can see that. That is juicy and delicious looking. Got a good crust on the outside, so I'm excited to try it. Here we go. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Bursting with juice. Maybe because it's the Wagyu and so much intramuscular marbling. Wow. That's amazing. Even the texture of the fat in the meat is different than a regular steak. It just melts. Um, so if you want to look at this, you can see the lines where the, let me see if I can pick this up here. You can see the lines where the fat is running through, but when you're chewing it, it doesn't taste like, or it doesn't feel like you're chewing on fat. Instead, it just feels like each bite is exploding with juice. So that's really nice. I really like that. Now let's see how the dry age compares. And as the time has gone by, you can see a little bit better um, the, uh, the redness in the meat. But let's find out here. Okay. I'll just get a slice here from the center. All right, here we go. Rock and roll. Dry aged Wagyu New York strip. 60 days in the dry age. I'm really excited to try this. My mouth's watering right now. Here we go. Wow, I didn't think I would say this, but this is even better. Mm. That's incredible. I don't get any of the funk or weirdness that I got with the dry aged brisket that I did, even though this is 60 days. Um, I just get this deep, rich flavor. And maybe because it's Wagyu, it is still incredibly moist. I mean, geez. One thing you would never think about while you're eating this is it needs moisture. Okay, I'm gonna get this little end piece, see if I get any extra flavor here on the end. Hmm. No. That's super good. Amazing. So good. I was kind of wary of this when I first started the process after my you know 45 day dry aged brisket, but after eating this, I am so glad I did this. This is amazing. This might be the best steak I've ever had. It's so good, so good. I mean, it's got the perfect level of doneness, bursting with that dry aged flavor. It's just a, a more concentrated, more complex flavor. I don't get any off flavors or anything like that. It's amazing. Both of these steaks are great, but I think in this case, unlike the dry aged brisket, the dry aged wins out by a pretty fair margin. Even though this is great, this is amazing. <laughs> Man, the only downside about this is this isn't American beef. <laughs> I wish I could say, get it, America, best beef in the world. This is Wagyu. I'm not going to stop eating it, though. Man, I thought I was just going to do a taste test and throw this away because of my horrible experience with the dry aged brisket and the weird flavor. But my goodness, each bite of this makes me want to take another bite. Um, this is the best bite so far. Mm. You need to try this. Mm. This is amazing. You know, there's this actually a unique taste. It's almost like bacon. You know, like when you bite into a chunk of bacon, it's unmistakably bacon. I get a little bit of that on the exterior of this meat. Um, it, so good, rendered fat, uh, delicious beef flavor. It's amazing. Bacon. All right, this one is for the hungry camera person, my lovely wife. So try it out. Tell me what you think. Dry aged steak. This is the first time you ever had dry aged? Mm hmm. Okay, what do you think? Whoa. It's good, right? <laughs> it's so good. I was so ready to throw this away and be disappointed again. But this was incredible. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this thing, so beautiful. And you see like the, the, the little like stream of fat that runs through? You don't feel like you're eating fat. You just feel like you're eating the richest, most delicious, flavorful steak of your life. It's so good. 
Oh man, all right, let me take this inside and I'm gonna eat the rest of it. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every bite. I'm glad I just did salt on the exterior because I really wanted to get a sense of the taste of the beef. And I think it would have been totally fine if I had done salt and pepper, but I didn't want to do like Montreal steak seasoning or something like that. But you get pure beef flavor. It's incredibly good. So glad I did this experiment. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to subscribe, you hit that subscribe button down below. You'll be following my channel. And then you're going to get all kinds of great experiments like this one. I hope you guys out there try this experiment yourselves so that you can experience what I'm experiencing right now. If you guys have anywhere close to the results that I did, you're going to be very, very pleased with what happens. But thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Crap. Let's try it one more time. Here we go. I got it. This is the one. This is the one. This is the take. This is the take.